In 2008, Cyclone Nargis devastated Myanmar. Millions of people were in severe need of help. The UN wanted to rush people and supplies to the area, but there were no maps, no maps of roads, no maps showing hospitals, no way for help to reach the cyclone victims. When we look at a map of Los Angeles or London, it is hard to believe that as of 2005, only 15% of the world was mapped to a geocodable level of detail. The UN ran headfirst into a problem that the majority of the world's populace faces, not having detailed maps. But help was coming. At Google, 40 volunteers used a new software to map 120,000 kilometers of roads, 3,000 hospitals, logistics, and relief points, and it took them four days. The new software they used, Google MapMaker. Google MapMaker is a technology that empowers each of us to map what we know locally. People have used this software to map everything from roads to rivers, from schools to local businesses, and video stores to the corner store. Maps matter. Nobel Prize nominee Hernando de Soto recognized that the key to economic liftoff for most developing countries is to tap their vast amounts of uncapitalized land. For example, a trillion dollars of real estate remains uncapitalized in India alone. In the last year alone, thousands of users in 170 countries have mapped millions of pieces of information and created a map of a level of detail never thought viable. And this was made possible by the power of passionate users everywhere. Let's look at some of the maps being created by users right now. So as we speak, people are mapping the world in these 170 countries. You can see Bridget in Africa, who just mapped a road in Senegal. And closer to home, Chalua in MG Road in Bangalore. This is the result of computational geometry, gesture recognition, and machine learning. This is a victory of thousands of users in hundreds of cities, one user, one edit at a time. This is an invitation to the 70% of our unmapped planet. Welcome to the new world. Traffic is a global epidemic. US traffic is creating 45% of the world's air pollution. In the UK, time wasted in traffic costs 20 billion a year. Would you pay for cleaner air and a faster commute? Stockholm put it to a vote. I voted for it, yes. I voted for it. I vote for it. We're not old enough to vote. Vote. <laughs> we had to do something in Stockholm to improve the environment and to get a better flow in the traffic. We put a price on taking your car into the central parts of Stockholm and we call that congestion charges. If you start a system like this and it doesn't work on the first day, then you will be in big trouble. It must be perfect from day one. There are 18 entry gates to the city. Each is equipped with cameras. Pictures are taken of the rear and front license plates. These pictures are sent to a central system that identifies the license plates and makes sure that the right person pays for the right passages. One of the obstacles we overcame was the OCR, the optical character reading of the license plate. We went out to IBM's global organization and the R&D centers and find a very good software we could use. And we managed to implement it in two months' time. This is the heart of the system where all images and passages are being processed. Over 99% of all pictures are correctly identified. So it's nice. This is how it should be all the time. Behind me you can see the traffic, and the clock is 6 p.m. Before we had the congestion charging, the traffic was chewing up at this time of the day. I think it's a good idea, because I think that we should take care of the environment in the city. The traffic went down with about 22%, and the air pollution was about 14% better. 
it's a huge international interest from different parts of the world, from uh, the United States, from Latin America, from China, and it's really a pressure to tell people not what we are planning to do, but what we actually have done in Stockholm. I voted for it, yes I did. Not my husband, so, <laughs> but I did. I think he is not thinking like me for the future. I'm thinking for the children and the grandchildren.